Hi everybody, it's me, Ashley. So, I am on my way to Aroma Joe's. So, okay, personally, I think Aroma Joe's is better than Dunkin' Donuts and Starbucks, but to rank it to really show how much I don't like Dunkin' Donuts, I would say Aroma Joe's is one, Starbucks is number two, and Dunkin' Donuts is three. The thing that I hate the most about Dunkin' Donuts is when you order something, like I always order a mocha iced coffee because that's my favorite there. They always put the syrup at the bottom and they don't mix it. So then you take a sip out of the straw and all you get is the mocha syrup. It's like, you have one job. Can you just mix it please? Like, I don't know why I'm talking about coffee. Um, can I get a blue raspberry rush, please? Of course. There's two dogs in the car behind me, and they're so cute. There you go. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. So good. So much sugar, so much caffeine, but it's so good. Hello again, it's me. Um, so here I am back at my house, and um, I'm going to start my records, reviews, and reports. So, the first album that I picked out of my record collection is H2O by Hall & Oates. Um, I think the most popular song on this album would be Man Eater or One on One. So this is the sleeve inside. Family Man, okay. Oh, neat. I haven't looked at this forever. So this is all of the songs on the album. This is the nice sleeve that was in it. And here's the vinyl. So pretty. Um, so my fun story about this album is the reason why I picked this album is because of a certain song on this album, uh, Man Eater, because um, last weekend, me and my mom went to, I can't put this back in there, but I don't want to force it in, so I'm gonna wait. Me and my mom went to the Hall & Oates concert, um, and we were excited, we were front row, we were so close to the stage, it was insane. So, we went and we are waiting for them to come on, they finally come on, we're freaking out, they were playing Maneater, that was the song they opened with. Right when Maneater was done, this guy came out and was like, we have to postpone the show, it's a huge electrical storm coming in, blah blah blah. Um, Daryl got mad, <laughs> he wanted to keep playing, and then the guitar tech guy just took his guitar from him, and then they all went off stage, so then we're all just waiting around for about 20 minutes, and the guy comes out again and says that the show got cancelled, so me and my mom are like, what? Are you kidding me? Like, we've been waiting forever for this, so then they tell us that we all need to go back to our cars, and we're like, so it's safer for us to go back to our cars rather than sitting under a covered pavilion makes no sense so we went back to our car we were drenched it was ridiculous and my mom just texted me this morning that they're not rescheduling that show so after all of that we are not going to be front row for hollow notes at all my life is ruined so that's why i picked the h2o album um, this album came out in 1982. Um, I got most of my records from my mom. Um, basically all of my records from my mom. From my mom, my boyfriend gave me a couple that from the 80s that he had, and so I was just like, I'll take them. Um, because the 80s was my favorite era. A lot of people say, why is the 80s your favorite? And because they're like, to me, it's the worst decade. I'm like, it's better than what we have today. I mean, come on. So, a lot of people my age, I'm 21, a lot of people my age don't like modern music or say they don't like modern music, like pop music and stuff that's on the radio now to be quirky or unique. And I'm not that way. Um, I like this music because it's what I grew up with. My mom played this music constantly in the car. We, had, we used to have a huge stereo system and when we lived in our old house, and I remember her playing like all these 80s music and stuff like Hall & Oates, Rick Springfield, Duran Duran, um, who else did we have? That's all I can think of right now. Um, Richard Marks, uh, you know, like all of those, Def Leppard, all of those um, 
A's bands, they were her favorite, so they grew on me and they became my favorite. And um, so for me, I've been to more 80s band concerts than I have with people of this current era. So um, for me, this is my music. This is what I love. It's It's my favorite and I just, I don't know what else to say, but so this is H2O. <clears throat> my mom had this when she was my age, which is so funny because I just love getting vinyls passed down to me from my mom. All right, so moving on to my next vinyl that I'm going to review. So I had a really hard time picking between two Rick Springfield vinyls. So I decided to cheat a little bit and do two. So my, probably my favorite album, but I only really like, okay, so I only like the A side on this album, Living in Oz. I like every single song on the A side. It's Human Touch, Allison, Affair of the Heart, Living in Oz, and Me and Johnny. Um, ooh, but Souls is good. Okay, maybe not. But so I got this for $3 at Bull Moose. Um, it's a local record music shop that we have um, up here. And I was like, okay, yeah, $3, I'm gonna take it. So I bought this one myself. Um, this wasn't my mom's. This came out in, let's see when this one came out. This one came out in 1983. So this came out a year after H2O, which is interesting. So the, my favorite song on this album would probably be um, Allison. I love that song so much. It's the second song on side A. Um, and so, I don't know. I just love him. He's just such a little nugget. I love Rick Springfield. So, um few years ago oh wait let me before I say my story let me go into this <clears throat> this is my second favorite album by Rick Springfield success hasn't spoiled me yet this one came out in doesn't say on here does it I have to go into the sleeve again <laughs> this one came out in 1982 okay so this one came out the same year as h2o hollow notes in a year before living in oz interesting so this one has some songs that are just really special to me um don't talk to strangers what kind of fool am i i get excited so i just love this album i think this is one of his most iconic albums because i feel like this um how did i put this in there I need to stop taking these sleeves out because I'm having such a big problem putting them back in this freaking vinyl thing. Oh, there we go. Got it. I don't know. I think that this album of his, I mean, Jesse's Girl isn't on this album, so maybe not. I don't know what I'm saying, but this I think is iconic because of the album cover. That was his dog and his dog is on another one, another one of his albums too, which I have in there, but I'll review that another day. So it's not overpowering by Rick Springfield. Um, but this is a really good album, and this one was my mom's. She gave this one to me as well. I don't know, it's just, I love Rick Springfield. So anyway, my story about Rick Springfield, a few years ago, me and my mom met him at a book signing, um, in Barnes & Noble, someplace down in Massachusetts, and we met him, we got a picture with him, we got a, a, his book signed, so that was cool. We didn't see him in concert. We met him. It was just it was just funny and unique and cool. And then two years ago, we ended up seeing him in concert with Richard Marks. So it was neat. It was like, so we met him before we saw him live. I don't know. It was cool. So that's my story with Rick Springfield. We met him. He was really nice. And, and yeah, so then we saw him in 2017 with Richard Marks, who I have his vinyl too that I will review another video. All right, so my third and final vinyl that I am going to review today is, drum roll please, Some Girls by the Rolling Stones. Um, so this is my favorite Rolling Stones album because I just love it. It came out in 1978 and everyone says that was like their best year. I got this at a um, <clears throat> fun little record store down in Mass. Oh, hi, Luna. My cat's coming to join me. Oh, don't walk on my records, babe. Real. Don't walk on the records, honey bunner. Say hi to the camera. Say hi. Do 
she hates being held. So anyway, um, so let me move these so she doesn't walk on them again. So I got this at this at a fun little record store down in Mass. Um, so the guy was really cool, and I told him that I was seeing them in the summer, and he was like, "Oh, that's awesome! I saw them like three times when I was your age." And I was like, "Thanks for rubbing it in." So this is cool because you can move the faces out <laughs> and put them back in. So my favorite song on the Some Girls album would have to be Shattered. It is the last song on the album, unless if you get the deluxe version. Um, I just think it's different and unique and I don't know. I just, I just love the sound of it and I love the lyrics. It's just good. <laughs> I am so bad at talking, but... Probably the most famous song on this album would probably be Miss You. Every I feel like everybody knows that song, which is the opening track to the album. Um, What else might people know? Beast of Burden. I think that was another popular one that most people know. And I feel like most people would know some girls as well. What you doing, Ro? Hi, baby. She's like, Mama, I want to be in the video. Everyone wants to see me. She's so cute. Rue, hold on, I gotta show you this. She is sitting on my vinyls. Luna! So this one came out in 1978. I know a couple people that actually went and saw them in 1978 on this tour. And I'm so jealous because it's my favorite album. And I'm jealous and sad that I couldn't be there. <laughs> so, um, this is the vinyl. It's really pretty. I like the yellow. Um, so my story about this album, or the Rolling Stones at least, me and my boyfriend saw them um, back in July. Um, you can go watch my Philly trip video because we drove down to Philly to see them. Um, we ended up getting literally front row, barricade, super close to the stage, as close as you can get. So my story with the Rolling Stones would be Mick Jagger pointed and smiled at me. Um, it was downpouring rain. They were in the middle of Start Me Up. Um, it was crazy. Everyone around us was in their ponchos, me and my boyfriend. I'm just gonna say Buddy. His name is Buddy. Um, so I don't have to keep saying my boyfriend, my boyfriend. So Buddy, me and Buddy were literally in the front row. It was downpouring. Everyone around us had ponchos. We didn't, so we looked like the sore thumbs. And plus, everyone around us had like their cameras out. I think I filmed only like three like snippets of songs. I didn't even record a whole song, I don't think. So, because I wanted to be very in the moment. So, we were the only ones there that weren't like glued to our phones and like filming them. So I think that's another thing that made us noticeable. So Mick came right in front of us and was like looking at our area of the crowd and we're like, yeah, and I'm going nuts, all excited. And he like looks right down at me and points at me and smiles. And I was like, ah, he looks at me. So. That's my celebrity story with the Rolling Stones. Anyway, he's old enough to be my grandfather, but it's fine because I just love him anyway. He's an iconic man, and I can say Mick Jagger smiled and pointed at me. Who can say that? Not very many people, but I can. So, anyway, that's some girls. The back is interesting. So, I think that's all I have to say today. Anyway... I hope that was at least a little bit interesting for everybody. Um, got my drink. So, after all that, I think my records, reviews, and reports is going to come to an end. So, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you tune into my next video. Which, I don't know when that's going to come out, but hopefully soon. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Mwah!